This episode is brought to you by Tesla Taxi Australia. Find out how you can save with Chris. On today's show, Tesla Autopilot proves once again how safe it is, how you can get into a brand new Bugatti for $50,000 and beer not wasted. Welcome everyone, my name is Chris and this is your show about everything happening in the space of renewable technologies like electric vehicles, battery storage, solar wind and what well, more. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing, it does seriously support the channel. If you want to take it up to the next level, join these awesome individuals over here on Patreon where you get exclusive behind the scenes content, early access, news, polls and now Discord that you just don't get here. And uh, yeah, I really do hope you are safe and all very well. Okay, and hey, thanks to like Ashley Hill, Nigel Farrier, Ray Johnson, and Tessa and the Gog. All right, let's get into the news, shall we? I'm going somewhere. Hang on, wait. Uh, wasn't that good? And I'm very sorry for that, but what I just created there was energy. Yes, fuel. Well, that's what South Australian breweries have done with millions of litres of beer. Millions of litres of beer, yes siree. You see, millions of litres of beer, sadly unused due to like reduced sales in restaurants and pubs and clubs when like South Australia introduced cor coronavirus restrictions in March. Well, that meant that the breweries, they were gonna like just pour that beer down the drain. Oh. I think this is the expression most of us are doing right now, right? So seeing an opportunity, the Glenelg Wastewater Treatment Plant west of Adelaide took that beer and well converted it into renewable energy to help generate enough power to run the wastewater treatment plant. The process entails like discharging the beer into the site's digester tanks, where it's mixed with like sewage sludge to produce biogas. The biogas then is like used to feed the site's um, like gas engines and in turn create electricity. Clever, right? In total, more than 150,000 litres of beer each week has been used to help run this plant, which is like if you were to do the same thing for a home, that could actually power more than 1,200 houses. Wow. Just wow. Sad about the beer though. Have you signed my petition urging the Australian government to introduce EV incentives in Australia? No? Yes? Well, either way, please do, because here's what happens when uh, like, there's lack of support and a real policy vacuum, because it dissuades businesses and it dissuades consumers. And well, this is one less EV for our roads. And that EV is Renault, Renault Zoe who have announced that it will actually remove the electric Zoe from Australia, citing that it's been disappointed by sales of just like 63 units in the last three years. Costing just shy of like $50,000, Zoe ZE40 electric hatch has only like a 300 kilometer driving range and well, was well suited to urban environments. Now, if we had incentives like what we see in Europe and America, this small car which might have cost maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe like about $40,000, probably sub $40,000. At that price point, some out there would have said, you know what, this is a no brainer. The break even price between a conventional internal combustion engine vehicle versus this, well, this is gonna be cheaper long term. And so without incentives, there just hasn't been anything close to that sub $40,000 marker. And well, until we get there, until we get incentives, and look, incentives don't just necessarily mean a dollar discount. No, it can mean lots of different things, like like all these and well more. So please, uh, if you've already signed the petition, great work, love it. If you haven't already, please do sign it. And like so far, there's been like 575 and more people who have done so. So share it with your friends, get it in your politician's ear, and let's make this happen in Australia. In these challenging times, what with COVID-19, government uh, regulations forcing businesses to rethink how they operate, in fact, let alone even operate, I thought it might be worthwhile checking in with Millen from Tesla Taxi Australia. So right now, we're just about to do a live video link because, well, what do you do in this day and age? Yeah, you do Zoom meetings. 
And well, he's currently online, driving in one of those Tesla Taxi Australia things, and well, let's see where he's at. Hey Milan, I trust you're well, and uh, just checking in, how are things now like in this, well, post-COVID world of ours? Yeah, hi Chris, great to see you back on screen. Uh, we've had a really good last few months. Things are starting to bounce back quite nicely after COVID. Unfortunately, uh, we were going to send a car down to Victoria soon, but uh, we've had to put that on hold, obviously. And uh, we did have another two cars on order that we we're going to get in June, but uh, we've also put those on hold just because uh, obviously the demand's only back up to about 70% of what it was in January. So uh, yeah, we're just sort of seeing how it goes with the rentals at the moment before we expand our personal fleet. Uh, but we have had some new members come on board like there's a Model S now in Brisbane uh, available for rent that's not owned by us, just a private owner. And uh, we've got uh, another few cars in New South Wales and Victoria that are coming online over the next few weeks uh, from new owners that have uh, joined up with our group. Okay, that's great to hear, Melon. And so, like, how many, I guess, without maybe giving away too many market secrets, how many rental requests are you getting at the moment? Yeah, Chris, uh, we just hit uh, 45 rental requests per week for the last few weeks, which is down from the 55 per week that we were getting uh, before COVID, but uh, it's definitely a sign of improvement and uh, movement in the right direction. Uh, we're also finding a heap of our uh, rentals at the moment are indeed test drives. So for instance, the last couple of rentals I did on the Gold Coast are people, one of them's even looking possibly getting a Roadster and uh, the other one's probably gonna get a Performance Model 3 or he might be waiting for the Model Y. So um, yeah, definitely really good feedback back from all the people that have been uh, renting from our group. Well that's pretty amazing Melon and uh, good to hear and um, so look are there any specials coming up that maybe some viewers might be interested in? Um, yeah, Chris, the current special we've got in Brisbane is the Model 3, uh, it's the white car, so our uh, SR Plus, and uh, we're currently offering 48 hours, so two days for 440 including membership, or we've got uh, even more discounted pricing for people that have rented from us in the past that are already members, uh, as little as, if you're doing a midweek rental, as little as 280 for two days, so that's about 140 a day. So yeah, there's some specials like that, and uh, we are trying to start up some of those specials in New South Wales and Victoria next month as well for people that want to get their uh, cars heavily utilised out there in the market. That's great to hear Melon and look uh, guys and girls who are watching right now I'll put on screen his latest offering because uh, you know between this right now and editing and publishing I might have got some new information so yeah do check him out and look if you are thinking about maybe getting a Tesla but you're unsure it's the right fit for you, you can actually you know, rent one of these cars for a day, a few days, even a week, or even longer. And uh, I've uh, helped out Millen here in the past and they've been a very kind sponsor of the show and I thank Millen for doing that. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great opportunity, not only just for people who actually want to try out a Tesla, but also maybe if you're an owner, you can put your car up and earn yourself a little bit of nice income. All right, well, thanks again, Millen, and uh, you stay safe and, yeah, wash those hands. Thanks again, Chris. Have a great time and uh, keep up the great work. See ya. Okay, time for Mail Time. And, well, last week I brought you news about Jaguar Land Rover's lab, who's doing this, like, contactless touchscreen thing where I shared my misgivings about, well, how silly I think this is. What with the difficulty of, like, getting your finger to stay still in a moving car, as well as the fact that they're trying to sell this as a, uh, a wellness, um, you know, uh, in a bacterial viral world and how to decrease the number of bugs inside your car. And well, I got this comment. Voice activated car options are probably more virus spreading than touch screens. Thanks Patrick, agreed. And yeah, don't even star me on the fact you gotta open the door to get in, seatbelt, you know, I've been over this in the past. If you wanna, if you wanna see what I'm talking about, <laughs> click up here. On the same show, I talked about Tesla's Q2 earnings call and how Elon is like looking for nickel producers to help with the battery constraints. To which Michael Fink wrote this. I agree, we have a lot going for us, considering Tesla's emphasis on vertical integrated manufacturing. In addition, big reserves of nickel and lithium, we have plenty of iron ore, bauxite and copper, as well as a strong workforce and well, plenty of suitable land. Absolutely, Michael, and you know what? I think that Elon is on the same page as you and me, where he tweeted this. Also, we get our lithium from Australia. Excellent, thanks, Elon. So I'm looking forward to seeing you in our country once again when you can, and seeing some sort of gigafactory over here. Maybe, just maybe. Anyway, 
very short and sweet little mail segment this week. And if you want to get your uh, comment read out online, or you've got a question for me, put it down there in the comments and well, I'll try to reply to them. And maybe, just maybe, you'll be on next week's show. Otherwise, yeah, subscribe whilst you're there. That'd be very helpful. Time for some news bites. Volta Trucks, the Scandinavian startup full electric vehicle manufacturer, will soon start a pilot test of its forthcoming Volta 7 Zero, Volta Zero in the UK. Specifically designed to deliver parcels and freight in inner city locations where like today's air quality and noise pollution challenges are at their worst, the Volta Zero's full electric zero emission operation looks quite like a very much a large truck which would do really, really well in Australia. Got plans this coming Wednesday, the 5th of August? Well, if you can, register and tune in for the Smart Energy Council's Energy Ministers Summit, featuring a panel of our state and territory leaders who actually have the portfolio of energy and more importantly for this show, renewable energy, I think it's very important, especially in these very much uncertain times and well, misdirection, especially from you guys, that we all try to listen to what their vision is on how a cleaner and more hopefully greener future will look and well, how much they actually understand about the very rapidly changing energy market. Bugatti, better known for its fuel guzzling supercars, has given its blessing to the little car company to produce a 75% scale electric replica of the Type 35 racing car. Called the Baby 2. Now, these things, they're not cheap. With the base model starting at $50,000 Australian, the Vitis at $71,000, and a collectible per sang range topper at $96,000. That's you could buy a Tesla long range Model 3 for that much money. Crikey. Anyway, you better be quick because, well, at these prices and the fact that they are limited, 500 only, they're going to sell out real fast. Regular viewers of this show will know that I can be an absolute shocker when it comes to pronunciations, especially with braces. Hashtag out. So, for the next news item, I'm not going to even begin to even say. <clears throat> No, who have announced that its subsidiary, uh, A123, will supply EV batteries to the Volkswagen Group in China. The deal, worth more than $1.8 billion of batteries, that will seem, that will be actually rather, the third battery supplier for VW in, well, China. In 2019, the VW Group has been busy acquiring various companies to help shore up its supply chain and in particular been buying out very 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 different sort of EV companies over there as well as working with cattle producer cattle EV battery producer and well more and well this is going to help them meet the office obviously future demand issue Lucid Air has announced its version of Tesla's autopilot the dream drive which according to Lucid Air is this like advanced driver assistance system using an array of 32 multimodal sensors, such as like camera, radar, ultrasonic sensors, as well as long distance high resolution LiDAR. This Lucid Air claims makes its cars with Dream Drive the ability to function in like any weather condition and yet another level of safety as its driver monitoring system tracks driver attention and will fatigue through internal eye tracking hardware. Whilst no level five autonomy, this system will have like full speed highway assist. That's kind of like adaptive cruise control and well, lane centering, as well as like driver uh, traffic drive off alert. That's third term, traffic drive off alert, whatever that is. And well, headlight assist. Over the air updates will mean that like Tesla, it can continue to increase its autonomy and assist drivers. And finally, speaking of autopilot, Tesla released its Q2 safety report and what well, the results are to say the least, impressive. In the months April to June 2020, Tesla registered one accident for every 7.2 million kilometers driven in which drivers had autopilot engaged. For those driving without autopilot but with like Tesla active safety features going, 
they registered one accident for every 3.6 million kilometers driven. Now, how does it actually compare to people who don't drive Teslas? Well, for those driving without autopilot nor Tesla's active safety sort of jazz, they have an accident expected to occur once every 2.4 million kilometers, which Tesla then even further compares to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, just like a US government agency, where their most recent data shows that in the United States at least, there is a car crash every 766,000 kilometers. I'll say it again, 766,000 kilometers. That's like a factor of 10. 10! That is to say, you're 10 times less likely to have an accident in a Tesla on autopilot. Well done, Tesla. Okay, well, short and sweet show today. I hope you've enjoyed that. And if you did, subscribe. And if you want to take the next level, join these awesome individuals over on Patreon. If you've got a question, if you've got a comment, like it down below. I do want to hear from you. And otherwise, you guys, be good and be green.